Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are here with part one of a double upload day, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, we're starting the day off with one of the favourites right here on the channel. It's certainly one of my favourites to actually record. It is the Rangers Review Podcast with Stevie from Four Lads Had a Dream and David from Heart and Hand talking all things Rangers right up to this exact moment in time based on the last month. Anyway, <laughs> but aye, as everyone sort of knows the script now with these podcasts, it's not a video, it's one of these ones that we sit and listen to and we have a conversation down there in the comment section below. There's some interesting talking points this month that David brought up and I'm looking forward to seeing what your opinions are down there in the comment section below. But without any further ado, let's hand it over to David who's hosting this month's podcast and yes, I'm sure there will be a couple Spice Girls references. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Rangers Review. My name's David Edgar from Heart and Hand Rangers Podcast and it's my turn in the chair this month. Joining me to discuss all the latest Rangers news is first of all the YouTube sensation is CJ Novo. Good afternoon CJ. Good afternoon mate. I'm actually glad it's your time now to be on the chair because I was really running out of uh, Spice Girls references. So now the pressure's on you this week, this month, sorry. Well, maybe two of them will become one as we uh, <laughs> as we head on through. The, the man, of course, who brings the flavours of spice to the proceedings from the Four Lads Had a Dream blog and, of course, the 1010 Podcast Network, it's Stevie Clifford. Hello, Stevie. Hi, David. Hi, CJ. How are you boys doing? Hi. Um, not too bad, I've got to admit. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is that, uh, well, since we started this podcast... Rangers have had uh, a record domestically that, that might be considered no bad. Um, and that we have taken, in that time, 17 matches, we have taken a grand total of 49 points. So things are not bad, really, <coughs> um, being a Rangers supporter. But uh, let's let's start off then. The, the last time we spoke, uh, Rangers were... Sitting very pretty at the top of the Premier League. We just defeated Celtic by a goal to nil at Ibrox. We were all very happy, very excited. We felt the next run of games were, were going to be important. Um, they've went well for us and they've went rather disastrously for them. We will talk about certain holidays, certain decisions that uh, our <laughs> opponents made that have maybe not acted the way that they had hoped they would act. But uh, for us, let's start with Rangers. Let's go back a few weeks. After that match, of course, Stevie, we headed up north. We went to Pitondry. Never an easy place to go, etc., etc. We know what you're going to get in terms of a performance from Aberdeen. I think the key thing for a lot of us was we'd seen this movie before where Rangers come out of that New Year game or Christmas game, whatever you want to call it, uh, against Celtic. were looking good, feeling fine, and then collapse off the edge of a cliff. And that first game at Pitondry... A slow 20 minutes, then Rangers sprung into life, played some great stuff for about the next 45 minutes, lost a silly goal, and then were hanging on a wee bit at the end. But there were signs in that match that, oh, hang on here, that we discovered in a wee bit of form. Yeah, I would agree. Um, overall, I was quite pleased with, uh, with the, the game of Pataudry. Um First and foremost, I think you know everybody's a wee bit blinded by um, the the three points, you know, because as supporters, if you get the three points, you don't tend to, you know, overanalyze too much. So I was quite happy with with that in in terms of um the th the three points first and foremost, and then the the performance, as you said, David, for about forty five fifty minutes, like you mentioned, it was very good, um, and it, and it probably flattered Aberdeen quite a bit. Um, even when Aberdeen did pull that goal back, um, I didn't ever feel in danger. It was quite a sloppy goal to lose, which um you know, which was disappointing, especially considering how well we've defended. Um but overall, um a great day. Great to see Alfredo back. Um probably his performance of the season so far. Um and um overall a, a great result um and a really good a good performance. And it felt like another hurdle just out of the way. Yeah, I think the that's a key point, CJ, that when you go up there, you know what you're going to get, right, from yeah. Aberdeen. It doesn't matter the circumstances. They're going to they're gonna go in and compete. The first 20 minutes was a wee bit slow, and we will talk about that. Um, didn't have the excuse of an early kickoff or anything. It was a Sunday game, but it was 3 o'clock, and Rangers a bit slow at the traps. Aberdeen weren't exactly flying at the traps either, having watched you know the game back. Uh, yeah. It was a kind of feeling-out process, and Rangers did asserted control. 
Um, got the penalty, missed. We'll come back to that because obviously there's a, a repeat of that later in the month. But um, didn't let that bother us. Got the goal, got the second after half time. As, as uh, Stevie said, terrific finishes from Alfredo Morelos. He was yeah, looking sharp as attack that day. And then went to sleep a wee bit, conceded a silly goal. I mean, you shouldn't get done on the break when you've got when you're playing 10 men and you're 2-0 mm. up that that just shouldn't happen but we got a wee bit excited conceded the goal and then we were nervous I think as fans and the manager said afterwards that we stopped doing a lot of the things that we'd done but equally we were never in bother you know Aberdeen didn't really threaten us there was no heart stopping moment and we yeah, got out of there with the three points yeah I think uh, the best way to look at it is the last 15 minutes of the game it was us that was closest to scoring they didn't have a shot in the last 10-15 minutes and that kind of shows you the, the way it went. But aye, there was definitely a drop. And I think it was just one of those games we were absolutely cruising. It kind of reminded me of the Benfica game a couple of months ago. See, when we were just so far ahead, we just kept piling people forward. And it was a wee, wee bit of a knock on us. Obviously, Kennedy scored that um, finish. But like everyone's kind of said there, we rebound, uh, responded very well. We kind of just saw the game. It defended a couple of set pieces. Kamara went close. But it's just one of the games for me, when you look at it, especially after Celtic, after getting that win, we all knew there was no slip-up or the week before the result versus Celtic it wouldn't really have mattered or held the same weight. So it was just about getting the, the three points, in my opinion, and we did that. And it was brilliant to see Alfredo back smiling and just scoring two absolute brilliant goals. Oh, he loves it up there, doesn't he? Oh, I, I um, wish we could he, play that every week. Oh, he, he absolutely loves playing against them. And, and they were terrific finishes. I mean, it was great yeah. striking play. And it, he got us over the line in that match. Stevie, when you're playing the likes of Aberdeen, it's it's a confidence builder. It's it's a tough away game. I think as Rangers fans, understandably, given the home record that we're going to be referring to uh, late, late, uh, later on in the show, that that it's away matches that we look at and say, right, those are our toughest games. And and clearly after Parkhead, you know, Petardry, Easter Road are going to be the ones that that you look at. But Rangers did play with a sort of confidence and an assurance, and I think that coming out of that, we felt great. Here we go. Um, looking good, and then a week off, which wasn't something we'd had. We, we've had a week between each of the games we're going to discuss today, uh, and we went off to Fir Park. Now, I've got this theory that's unprovable and probably ridiculous that I just don't like these 12 o'clock kickoffs. I'm not sure what the psychology of the extra half an hour does, but um, I just think Rangers always start flat in them. <laughs> off that. we went to Fir Park, and we did not get off the bus um, the first half an hour, another slow start, up against the Motherwell side to change a manager, new manager bounce. It's us, it's a live TV game, they're going to go for it, you know that. And found ourselves a goal down. Again, yeah, a, a, a decent, actually a decent goal from, from a Motherwell point of view, we need to be fair, you know, they, they worked yeah. a nice space, but from a Rangers point of view, there's three or four occasions in that goal where you can say we could have done that better. Recovered a little bit, um, towards the end of the half and then second half with the better side got the, the equaliser through Cedric E10 but couldn't got the win I want to expand therefore on a point that CJ alluded to which is namely that I don't think this Rangers team many sides in this league can beat if they go out there and you know that even if the opposition perform at their best but if this Rangers team get lulled into a false sense of security then that is the potential danger. Um, the other C word, complacency. And it's not a deliberate thing. It's not like the players are saying to each other, this league's done, put the tools down. But they're human. There's a lot of noise out there. They're watching the ensuing comedy going on across the city. It, it has an impact. And maybe in a way, didn't you feel it at the time, but maybe in a way that that was just a wee reminder but hang on a minute here, lads. There's some sides scrapping for their lives. This is not done yet. Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of... If we look back on this um, point in five, six weeks, having gone on another run, you'll say that it was the perfect time for them to have that, you know, little reminder. I think the only thing that can beat Rangers now is Rangers himself. But we've yeah. said that, you know, most of the season, given our confidence in the squad... But the point that um, CJ made is, is is a good one. And, and it also, what I always say to people and I think relevant is that teams, when they play us, absolutely put everything into it. Um, we made this point before, when you look at Hibs, you know, they, they tried to go toe-to-toe with us on, 
on a Boxing Day, and I think they won the, the season award for 30 minute giving us a game. And um, they, they've been horrendous since. And Motherwell, you know, couldn't keep that um, kind of intensity. And although they might not have been all over us and, and kind of pressing and forward, but having to match us, David, you know, and having to go toe to toe with our full backs and stop us playing, etc., they can't keep that up. Whereas I think Rangers are only the times that we, we've had, you know, our wee 20 minutes or whatever with Motherwell, I think the only thing that we're guilty of is um, believing that our game plan will, will come to the fore eventually instead of going and imposing it directly. So what I'm trying to say by that is, you know, when we feel our way into games like at Motherwell and at Aberdeen, um Sometimes you need to go and really put the foot down and impose yourself on on games like we have done before. So it's not not a criticism on the team because you know they have been fantastic. Um, but I think that would be the only thing that I I looking on would would say um, to the to the team etc. But I'm sure that obviously that that's what the management do. But you look at Motherwell, you know, having done all that, they they again they they get beat yesterday quite, and apparently they were quite poor and quite flat. So that's happened quite a few t- times when teams have either went, you know, quite close or toe to toe was that, you know, for games after they they're completely burst. No team that has uh, got points from Rangers only happened three times a season, but no team that has got points off Rangers uh, or St Mirren in the cup have won their next match. Yeah, well, that's, 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 I didn't know that stuff, but um, it just seems to me that no team can really like. There's not been a game where they've really dominated. Um, Rangers over over a, a period of time. I just think that if Rangers going to impose themselves in their game, I think we're too strong. Um, the way that we're playing and the way that the management team have, have got us playing, and it, it goes back to what, what CJ says on the way back in the very first episode when we talk about our favourite word, the evolution of this <laughs> team and this squad. Um, it, it's just been phenomenal. And Motherwell, yeah, um, it. You know, I tried to say, and I think we both said, David, you know, we were both disappointed, in, but in speaking afterwards, we both said, well, look, there's no damage done. Um, are we, are we, you know, kick up the bum for them all and, and, and we move on. Um, and it so happens that it was one of those games where the, the point was, was, was quite valuable for us in terms of how badly we were in the first half. Mm. I thought it felt at the end like a point gained, really, because the first half we just we we we, yeah. we didn't show up. Yeah, on that CJ, I know it annoys Rangers fans that when you watch a team the week before the week after and they play us, uh, and, and they're dreadful those two games, but then they, they come out against us and all our players are bursting a gut and flying into tackles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's what happens when you're the top side. This and it's it's a compliment. It's not uh, a conspiracy, and it's not uh, that that anyone's it to get you. It's you're the best side. Teams are going to come out and play, and they're going to come out and they're they're going to give you absolutely everything. We're generally live on TV, national TV, um, especially in these away matches. Uh, very rarely is it uh, just coverage on the the, the local channel, yeah. and yeah. that is what's going to happen. They want to knock you off your perch. With all due respect to the rest of the league, Devante Cole will get far more coverage and attention and whatnot. And I'm not picking him out. I'm just saying that this is a fact. A goal against us will be worth five goals against anybody else in that league. Yeah, that's right. Well, everyone's eyes will be on it. And that's how you make your name. If you want to make your move down south, make me a man or anything like that, you need to turn up in the games versus like us and obviously them because that's when people are actually going to be paying attention because they're not really going to sit and watch a bottom side side, you know what I mean, on like Sky Sports and everyone's gonna really do that. So no. I think that I think that's what the Beefies have kinda of alluded to. They've just emptied their tanks and give everything. But I like what you said there, David, that's made of a compliment to Rangers because they know that they need to go far and beyond and kinda of looking at the latest game, what John Hughes actually said after the match, he just paid absolute respect. He says the players gave everything, they got that and he just hopes one day that he can get a team that can play to the level that we've got. And that's that's the respect that we've gained now in this season and everyone knows like Tony Watnabring knows that they need to play fullback. Like mm, they're yeah. strikers, they know that they need to run about and play fullback because of how well that we're actually playing right now. And obviously, I see that as made of a compliment, kind of like yourself. Yeah, it, it, it happens. I, I 
I hate it, but it does. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not great. I remember years ago seeing Graham Sinis at, um, at the Loudoun Tavern. I think you were there that night, Stevie. And uh, he he was discussing this, and he said, after an early game in charge, he said to Walter Smith, we need to go and have a look at that boy in midfield. What a player. And Walter just looked at him and went, aye, watch him next week. <laughs> right? And he said, and it was my introduction to, to Scottish football, that that's the way they play against us is not the way that they play normally. Um and there was slackness and there was sloppiness, but Stevie, a real positive was a very sharp looking Cedric Eaton off the bench. Um, he hates Motherwell in the way, you know, <laughs> mentioned Alfie against Aberdeen. Uh, I think he's played around about 70 minutes and he's got four goals against them. Uh, in fact, it's just under 80 minutes because he's got a goal every 19 minutes uh, against Motherwell in his time here. And. Um, you know, Cedric Eaton was brought in. He's a project. He's a you know a young player. Uh, the manager has has spoken before about his attitude and says you know people forget that here's a young lad who's come over during a pandemic. He he doesn't get the opportunity to do the normal things that you do as a player, getting to know the city, making friends, hanging about in a social setting with the other players. He's had to just come and keep his head down, go through what we're all going through. But his attitude's first class, he's working hard, he's, and I'm seeing him developing and training. Um, the long-term future for this guy is is massive. There are edges to his game, but every time I'm watching him in one of these cameos, if you like, I'm seeing something else and I'm getting a wee bit excited by it, and you think, this is almost the perfect season for a young striker to be brought in. The team's winning, they're playing well, the confidence is good, and you're not getting a situation where... A good example, I'd say, is Wolves in England. They brought a striker at £35 million, but, you know, it's, it's England. Um, and the idea was to bring him through, but they lost their main striker and they're having to play him more than they wanted to, and he's drowning a wee bit. We're not having that. Cedric Eaton has, has been allowed to develop at the pace that the, the management squad want him to develop at, but he's also a really useful weapon. Yeah, he's a player that I think we all like. Uh, I, th- yeah. I think we've all said that. We've all said that we really like his attitude and and what he brings to the team, I think first and foremost, the boy can finish, um, as we've seen out in, in, in Poland with his, his goal in, in Europe, which really was a, a cracking finish. Um, he's, he's got all the movement in terms of, um, Mark Haley talks about this quite a lot, that he's, he's prepared to put in the, the hard work in terms of run the channels and, and run the lines and, and do the, the kind of dirty side of the game that you don't really see, which um, in, in the games where Motherwell... Um, where it was really tight, he came on and kind of changed things. And something he's really good at, David, that we don't have, um, or or we didn't have as an option, is he likes to pull away to the back post. Now, he yeah. he's scored a couple of goals doing that. Um, Motherwell, the one we're talking about, he pulled away quite nicely. Motherwell at home, he done the exact same from the corner. He seems to find space. Now, if you've got a guy that's six foot, you know, two or three, whatever he is, and still manages to find space in the box, then that's a a very clever thing to, to be able to do. As you said, he's a project, but he's one that we've been able to manage well and, and, and kind of bed in. And I think that when the season is, is finished and, and we go on to next season and, and perhaps there's changes in terms of Jermaine Defoe um, contract ending and Alfredo maybe moving on, you've got a natural base there for a guy that should be ready to, to step straight in. And not only are we saying that he should be ready, he's, he's actually given us promise and hope to think that he will be ready and he does have the ability. It's not a case of, oh, well, we need to play this guy um, because, you know, we bought him for that. We, it's a more of a case of, well, he's earned his shot. Um, he's always, his attitude is, is really good as well in terms of, um, he just, he always, you know, he doesn't come on and never give his, his all. He always comes on and puts himself about he always comes on and, and, and does, you know, he always wants to get involved and never hides and he wants to make an impact. And I just think that's really, really great um, in terms of what, like like you said, he, he could be, you know, spitting out the dummy a wee bit because maybe there is times that he should have been starting and things, but he knows that he, he needs to earn his chance and, and wait. And he, he just seems prepared to do that. And I think that's reflective of everything about the club at the moment in terms of what we're doing right and, and where we are. Um, and he's certainly one a player that I like and, and somebody to look forward to getting more out of um, as his time at Rangers um, progresses. 
Moving on then to really the only reason CJ turned up here today, um, <laughs> and that was uh, yesterday's match against Ross County, where you know Rangers welcomed a Ross County side. I think it's fair to say in form, new manager bounce as we discussed. He brought in John Hughes, uh, and rather spectacular victory the week before when they hammered Aberdeen. Uh, by by four goals to one, really destroyed them, leading to a bedsheet protest outside <laughs> Putaudry. And um, you know, if you think the Celtic bedsheets are are uh, unimpressive, <laughs> you've never you've never lived until you've seen an Aberdonian bedsheet because he clearly wasn't he giving away a perfectly good bedsheet. No, no, uh, no. To to make a protest, so I think he'd, he'd found one from 1954 in a loft. But uh, you know, fair dues. And you should always use emulsion and not gloss paint. That's maybe a don't think it's asbestos on it. <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I don't think that. I don't think the sheets dry yet. But uh, even so, uh, they they came down the road full of confidence. But equally, you know, we we beat them twice this season. But the previous match, Ibrox was two 0 Took a last minute goal from Brandon Barker to to really seal it. They they're, they're decent. At, you know, the league position maybe doesn't indicate this, but in a match where they, they just need to get men behind the ball, they, they can do that, and they showed the week before they could score goals. The manager was was not happy the week before CJ. He spoke about the slow start, and, and clearly he felt that we'd allowed two points to slip right from the start. He spoke all week about, you know, I want a better start, and he was very animated. And, and something I noticed yesterday was... He had the subs out warming up after 10 minutes. Now, that, yeah. yeah, you're not bringing on a sub at 10 minutes. What the managers, when they do that, um, it's it's to say to the players, I'm not happy. Um, it's it's just saying to the players on the pitch, up your game. The ironic thing was I actually thought that we did start quite oh, well. Oh, <laughs> But he clearly disagreed with me. Yeah. But Rangers yesterday, uh, as we record, were sensational it, and it was a 90 minute performance some of the football that Rangers played yesterday was was absolutely outstanding um but I'll, I'll John Hughes in the press conference afterwards said you know I, I've told my boys learn from this not not just what you did but what they do he said it, it's not just the way that you know they pass the ball about he says we've played other teams that pass the ball in front of us he said they visit each other because they trust each other to be able to handle a difficult pass. He said, and if it goes wrong, they've got Davis in there that goes and, and Ryan Jack in the second half, it goes and wins the ball back and they start again and they smother you. And it's the way that you should play football. Um, I, I Very honest appraisal from a guy I think who is very honest. And it really was that yesterday. Rangers just got on the front foot and then did not allow County to breathe. Mm-hmm. Ah, it was just an electrifying start like you said we kind of talked about that in the press conference Gerard uh, talked about it so did Joe Aribo in his press conference and that as well and it was it, it was interesting because we'd obviously just dropped points versus Mullerwell and everyone was kind of just looking at this game just to see what would happen but like you said it was suffocating from the first whistle we were piling people forward we had more people in the box in that game than I've seen in maybe the last four or five weeks we had double digit shots I think it was 11 shots on target by the time we finished the game, but I just love the way we just went, right, no matter what goes wrong in this game, we're just going to keep piling people forward, we're going to keep being positive, because we took the lead through a fantastic header from Ryan Kent, I still can't believe that I'm saying that, but it was mm. absolutely unbelievable, Alfredo done very well with the header as well, but then we had that penalty miss, and I think in previous seasons, that is where maybe it could have just got a wee bit nervy and a bit tight for some of the players, but without at like a 15, 20 seconds where Tavernier was clearly pissed off at yourself, David, you probably saw that better than we did in the coverage, but he was very angry at himself, but he didn't let it negatively affect his performance, he just kept driving forward, he kept trying the cross, he kept trying uh, to get things clicking, and I thought that showed the difference in just his mentality this season as well, that there's nothing that's going to knock him off what he believes himself to be, and he was vital in the game of football, and I'm really trying to give praise to everyone else before I just spend the rest of the podcast on with Ryan Jack. And yeah, yeah, I'm trying yeah. my best. Me and Stevie will, will take this for a bit, and then, then we'll come back to you for that. <laughs> that um, that's probably best, I. Sitting oh. there with your five pages of notes, uh, <laughs> all of which just say Jack. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Stevie, the, the, there's a few things to, to, to pick up on from the game. I've got a few points that, that do tie into the rest of the month. Firstly, Philip Hellander was back. Um, scored a terrific goal, absolute bullet header that, you, that Mark Hately himself, I think, would have been proud of. A um, couple of ropey defensive moments, I thought, early, maybe rustiness, but overall he's back. And a few people drawing the 
the well when he's in the side we don't lose goals. Leon Balligan had been very good, um, particularly against Celtic. But you know th- there was maybe some disquiet about the, the way he handled the, the the two goals. It's a tough one. It's a nice tough one for a manager to have because he's two quality operators there. I don't think it's as simple as saying well. Uh, when Philip Hellander plays, we don't lose any goals. Um, you do have to take into account the circumstances of the match, etc. You know who we're playing, where we're playing, uh, and and various other things. But it's a nice problem to have. Yeah, I mean, I think the manager said quite rightly yesterday, it's, it's horses for courses in terms of who plays. We've come a long way, David, in terms of you know I remember the very dark days um, just you know, three years ago when our centre-half choices were absolutely atrocious. So when we have um, a set centre-backs as good as we have now, um, it is a luxury. I'm a, a huge Philip Hollander fan in terms of I would rather he played, um, and I think I've been quite vocal on that before. Um, but when Leon Balogun plays, it's not a case of me thinking, oh, you know, we're not as tight or we're not... I think Balogun is just as good. Both of them have their, their pluses in terms of Balogun. His recovery speed is, is very good, David. Um, and we've seen that a few times. And the manager obviously uses that when he decides who's going to play. But I think that Hollander is more steady and he's more positionally he's, he's wiser um, because he obviously doesn't have that pace. Although he's no slouch, he just doesn't have the, the acceleration or, or recovery pace that, that Balogun does. But his header yesterday was lovely. And what I liked about, you know, yesterday in terms of of that goal is that um, Goldson also getting on the score sheet. That's 12 goals between them. Barisic has, has 13 assists. Um, Hadji has 13 assists. And we were being labelled, you know, a one-man band for the last couple of years or for the, at least the first 18 months of, of Gerard's tenure. And the, the whole team is now just with assets and threats all the way throughout it. Yeah, um, very good. Very good stats there, Stephen. I'm impressed. Ah, yeah, I was actually very impressed. I was just sitting nodding my head there. Like I was listening no, to Neil no, McCann there. I liked no, it. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did the Ryan Jack stat I have and see oh. you'll be doing more than nodding his head. Oh, don't yeah, that, talk, talk to me, Stevie. Don't do it, mate. Uh, <laughs> before ha, we... Ha, oh, sorry, hands on the table where I can see them. <laughs> okay, before we get to this. Um, this is why this is only an audio pod. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> what he does in the comfort of his own house is is fine, but yeah. uh, I'm far too Presbyterian for that sort of unpleasantness. Oh, um, Rangers uh, you know, got got to, to half time three 0 up. Uh, two excellent, you know, goals to, to kick us off. Ryan Kent was was I felt quite emotional when he scored that goal. And with all due respect, yes, any goal is important and any goal is great, but it's the first against Ross County after five minutes. It's not even, you know, like an hour in and we're struggling or whatever. He was awful against Motherwell. And, you know, I'm not being nasty there. He just had one of those days. He couldn't do... He couldn't do right for doing wrong. You know, he, he ran the ball out of play, I think, three times on the touchline. And the last one, he just looked at his feet as much as... Why are you doing this to me? Yeah. And I think that the reaction there, and not only that from him, but also from his teammates, they are human beings. And that's the thing, CJ. He knows yeah. that he didn't play well last week and he's not been in top form. They're, they're not, you know, silly. And I'd mentioned that I thought against Motherwell. I think you can tell when Ryan Kent's not at his confident best because he, he overdoes it. The you know there's too many step overs. There's times where he sort of confuses himself because there's five or six options going through his head and he's not quite sure which one to commit to. And I said you know it's maybe a lack of confidence. And a listener said to me, well, how can he not be confident with one fifteen game you know fifteen games in a row and drawing one etc. And I was like, well, it doesn't work like that. You know when you're having a bad day at work. You know yeah. you you know you you might be you know happy and everything else, but you just know that it's one of these days where. You know, you, you're walking in here, you're stubbing your toe, etc. It, it happens. But I think it was great to see that he, he, that's what he's like. That's what I like about Ryan Kent. He's a fighter. And he was like, right, OK, I'm going to play myself out of this. And he, I, I thought he was tremendous yesterday. 
Aye, and the, 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 I think when you fired that picture as well, it just it kind of stuck with me as well because we saw it at that time, but we kind of get lost in the emotions of the game, so we didn't really pick it up because obviously the whistle goes and then there's mere things to talk about and that we get lost. But I think reflecting back on it, he knows, and I think we talk about players who really want it and everything like that. We spoke for pretty much the first month we spoke about when Kent was absolutely on fire and even that disappointing draw versus Livingston, it was him that went and got the ball in his own half and tried to beat everyone and tried to score in the 93rd minute, but it went just wide. This is a guy that really, really wants to do things at Rangers. And I think that goal just kind of got him back because, like you said, Mullerwell, it just was everything that he tried to do was wrong. He was tripping himself up. He was falling out of the ball. And I think Ryan Kent's at his best. Yes, when he's working hard, but when he's no overdoing it or he's no trying too hard, when things are just coming naturally to him, that's when he's so dangerous because they can go either side. They can really hurt teams. And I felt that goal being so early in the game just released them. And for the rest of the game, honestly, it was absolutely unplayable. They couldn't get near him. Yeah, like, genuinely. Okay. No, and, and, and you're right. I think you're spot on when you say about that natural element to his game. When he's just doing things without yeah. almost overthinking, yeah. um, when it's just all coming natural to him. It was a game earlier this season. We only won 2-0, so, you know, it, it maybe isn't the most memorable. We should have won by a lot more, but we were away to Hamilton, mm. and he was just brilliant. And it was that that you're saying. It was just, you could see it was, you know, off the cuff, spontaneity. Um, he was just flying with the ball. Uh, and... That's when he's at his best. Whereas I think, you know, as you say, when when he's falling over the ball because he's thinking they're past, they're on, they're going yep, the outside, they're it. going the left. That's when he's not at his best. But he's such a good player that, oh, you know. He was brilliant his... versus Aberdeen two weeks ago as well. I think a lot of people forget with that, obviously, because everyone kind of focuses on Morello scoring. But mm. he got two assists and he was outstanding in the game as well. But just like you said, that early goal just freed him up because you could tell that the Mullerwell performance really stuck with him. And I think that showed that in the emotion of the goal, just to get back at it. He, he, Stevie, he'll I always be judged to a higher standard because of the price tag, won't he? I, I think he's somebody that puts a lot of pressure on himself with yeah. regards to really wanting to drive on and, and wanting to be the best. Um, and I love that because he could he could come up here and, and treat it as a holiday camp and, you know, just kind of turn it on when he wants to. But I think that he gives me the impression that he's, he's got a lot of self-drive to really be the best that he can be. So the likes of yesterday, what I took from, you know, the, the celebration of his goals is, you know, he's delighted to get it and it's it's like a relief because he knows or he wants higher numbers and he wants yeah. higher influence on the game. But when you look at Ryan Kent, um, it's Opta stats. He, he create his, he's ranked one for open play chances, carrying the ball with shots at goal carrying with chances created, carrying uh, the ball with goals involved. Sometimes we look at these guys and wingers and we expect them to be dribbling around everybody, you know, every time they get the ball. But Ryan Kent's a different kind of player in terms of that. His movement between the lines, his ability to create space for others. Some of the stuff he does, we don't always notice to the naked eye. He's a player that I really, really like. Um, I'm a bit of a, a Ryan Kent fanboy um, and, and have been. And he's a big game player as well. He was poor at Motherwell and he'll know that. And I think the management would have told him as well, which reflected in, in maybe a wee bit of um, the celebration yesterday. But I love the fact that, that we're so far ahead and these guys are still wanting Driving. to kick on yeah. and still wanting these numbers and still wanting to, to, to really prove themselves. And I've got no doubts that that boy wants to go back down to England and everything else. But when he does go, if he keeps that attitude up and keeps that drive to be the best that he can possibly be, then he'll earn us, you know, quite a bit. And it, and it won't be five million due to a mistake in a contract either. <laughs> no, I think that that's a, a fair a fair point. Um, you got you tickled me with that one, Steve. Uh, I, I, that was a I laughed a little. That coming there, that in, no, I, I, I laughed a little. Um, yeah. Before we we get to, um, uh, for want of a better term, Jizz Fest uh, 2021 with, with CJ, but let's talk about that third goal, Steve. I'll stay with you, um, Joe Aribo Dane, Joe Aribo Hings. Uh, that was one of those goals where you just say, "Wow." Um, and uh, gonna gonna clang and drop a name drop on my way at the stadium yesterday. I bumped into my best friend Kevin Thompson, 
and we were discussing the you know the, the game and he was raving about Joe Aribo and he said that yeah I watched Joe in, in the summer in training he said he was flying he said he was the main man he said, but he got you know the the injury then the illness and he said and it knocked his confidence he says he's, he's a lovely guy he's, he's he's a very humble very nice young man and he said um but in terms of ability he said when he's you know fully fit flying and confident he said the boys get the lot and that goal yesterday was sublime before we get to the you know talking about the goal which we really should um, I, th- I think yesterday where he played is where I like to see him play. Um, because when you look back at the goals up at Aberdeen and Motherwell, which we con- conceded, um, Aribo is involved in both of them. Not his fault, David, but he could be doing things better. He didn't track the runner in either of them and he gave it up a bit too easily. Now that's you know that's a trait that you see often in in young kids that that are more forward thinking, and I don't think that he suits having to be deeper in the midfield role. But yesterday we kind of changed it up a wee bit, um, and went to a four two three one, um, and he was more he had a license to interchange and intertwine with your Kents and Hadjis, and I think when he's further up and neither of these guys who are so good on the ball and, and so creative, he revels and, and is able to do that and, and what I noticed straight away was from him, he was he wanted the ball and he wanted to take people on so when it came to his goal which he, he's going he's, he's going down a, an area where he's got absolutely nothing to, to do defensively it was really poor because he's, he's left sided so you've got to show him down the line um, but he, he just gets past people, he has this real ability just to, to dip and get glide past people like they're not even there from a complete standing position most people need a wee run you know or, or a bit of momentum but he he generates it himself and like what you said or right what Tomo said yesterday I, I remember sitting with you at the Coventry game in pre-season when he scored a, a lovely 1-2 finish um, and it was similar to the one up at Motherwell that he actually missed last week he he has the real ability to, to really kick on I mean he's he's got He's he's got everything. Um, he's maybe not got the consistency yet, but he he has he's such a, a delightful finisher um, in terms of what he can do with his left foot. It's always like a wee placed finish or a wee curl on the ball. That goal yesterday was was every bit as as good as any we'll see. Um, and there's an angle from the Sandy Jard in front that Rangers Telly put out this morning, and it shows you actually how tight he was to the byline. He's he's not as as far out as I thought he was when you look at it from the reverse angle. Mm-hmm. He's he's so tight and he just he guides it in. It's, it's a lovely, lovely finish. Should be up there when we're talking about goals of the season and everything else. Instead of the two or three, there might be quite a few because the fourth goal in terms of team movement, you know, we kept uh-huh. the ball for for over a minute. But I'm not I'm not going to spoil that. We'll, we'll <laughs> no, that no, that that, that would be this. that would be awful. That would be the worst bit of prick teasing in the history of. <laughs> Um, Talk but, about building the boy up just to take it all away. No, exactly. um, the that would be a disgrace, Mister Mister Clever. That would be an appalling <laughs> thing. That, that 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 would be uh, honestly the, the the worst decision since somebody went. Hey, what he travel? We've got a trip to Dubai here for sixty folk. Uh, <laughs> but we'll we'll come to that. CJ, come at the hour. Literally, come at the man. Uh, oh. I, 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 there's an obvious joke there that I'm too. To, yeah, to, to too much to <laughs> um, But yes, to, to make. But uh, Rangers made a quadruple substitution. Firstly, by the way, credit to the substitutes who came yeah. on, because normally you can see a game peter out when that happens, but they came on and they added, I thought, a lot of them, which is great in terms of squad news and uh, that you've got guys that are champing at the bit to be involved. But back came Ryan Jack. Frustrating injury layoff mm-hmm. for Absolutely. him and you um, that, that wasn't ever anticipated as being as long as it turned out. And that can happen, you know, we've all had illnesses where the doctor has, has maybe said to you, you'll be fine by X time and then you're not. But he is back and, my God, he looked sharp right from the off. And it was crowned pretty quickly by an absolutely fantastic goal. I said yesterday coming out of the ground that I thought Joe Rebo's goal was one of the goals of the season. Yeah. And th- that was before I'd watched the game back and then I saw this goal and I was like, my goodness. Um, 19 passes in the build-up, uh, just 
tearing them apart all over the park. Ends up with Yanis Adji, the assist machine, with yet another one. But what a finish by Raja. He's not going to get the credit for the finish, I think, because the move was so lovely. Yeah, the um, But it, it wasn't a tap-in. He got into the body, arrived at the perfect time, and then the perfect angle and, and lashed it past a goalkeeper who was in tremendous form, incidentally, yesterday. Ross County yeah. goalkeeper kept it. It would have been nine if it hadn't been for a goalkeeper who made, I think, four genuinely top draw saves. But uh, you, know, my first thought actually was, oh, CJ will be very happy, chappy about that. But uh, it crowned what was a really solid display by Ryan Jack. He came on and he did what Stephen Davis has been doing for the team, which is yeah. every time Ross County got out, he just went, no, nah, you're not having it, took the ball off them and started us up again. And he's an option that we've badly missed. Absolutely. Not badly because we can't win, but you take my point. I, I think I think a lot of people, and I've kind of had this discussion quite a lot when I've been saying that because I've been talking about it for months. <laughs> saying we need to go back. People's like, but we're winning a bit. I just think what he brings to the team is a very unique balance because I think he is our only midfielder that's defensive minded first, and I think that can be important sometimes. You look at some of the wee goals. I know we're not conceding a lot of goals. I'm looking at, <laughs> sit here and pick uh, holes in the team, but some of the goals that you can see is just maybe we've not had that defensive awareness at the right place. And I thought Jacko, when he came on, I'm going to be honest, he made one pass and he was my man of the match. Like, that was it. He made one pass and I was like, yeah, man of the match you, for me. You had the man of the match whether he got on or not. Yeah, well, <laughs> he was getting the award either way for being on the yeah, bench. Regardless. See the way he was sitting on it. It's fantastic. Right, yeah, yeah. That is, look, look at that. His socks were just perfect, weren't they? Yeah, oh, perfectly balanced. But when he came on, you saw it, and I think it was something Joe Rebo said before the game, actually. He talked about when Jacko's new back in training, the intensity, everything goes back up because that's what he brings to the table. He's no the most skillful midfielder. He's not going to score 30 yards. He's not always going to arrive in the Brokes, but he brings intensity, and you saw that with the team. And I thought he was important when we made that amount of subs that you mentioned earlier, that the game didn't peter out because he was biting, he was getting stuck in because not only did he score with his weak foot, by the way, which even he had a laugh about on Instagram, but five minutes after that, Ross County has an attack on the left-hand side and who comes flying out to just stop mm-hmm. that attack dead? It was Ryan Jack winning the ball, recycling it and getting us going again. And you've kind of touched on there, 19 passes. Jacko starts inside his own box because he's covering all his shows run. And he goes all the way up the park and ends up finishing it with his left foot. And I just thought that was a big performance. And that'll mean a lot to him as well, because he's probably seen this Rangers team doing very well. And obviously he'll be delighted with that. But he's maybe heard a couple of people saying, oh, where does Jackal fit in? Or anything like, will they get in when everyone's fit? I think Jackal gave everyone a wee bit of timely reminder what he brings to the team. And that's just absolute <laughs> intensity, aggression, but also a balance to the midfield. Yeah, I, I, and it's it's you know horses for courses certain games. I think Stephen Davis has been oh, tremendous this season, oh, yeah. um, but you can't have enough good players. And there have been games where you're thinking, God, it would be great to have Ryan Jack here, um, especially with yeah. your balance. So, sorry, cut you off there, David. But even the Aberdeen goal we scored usually when Tavernier piles forward, we've normally the way we kind of shift it is we have the right centre mid kind of slot in to cover in case there's a counter attack in. I think, and that's not me picking at Joe Rebo that here again, that's not his natural position as we've talked about, but I feel like Jack will be important for these types of games as the season goes on, with teams being desperate for points and actually needing to go forward, I think he's going to be important in that running to make us keep on ticking. Stevie? Ryan Jack has been on the pitch this season and not once has the opposition scored. Oh my God. See, see's like a bias. Boys, I need to go. That's it's it. it's just air coming out in 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 Falkirk at the moment. Oh um, god! But, uh, nice uh, enemy of food no, the entire place. Up. No, it's uh, yeah. Again, you can't have too many good players. And what I'm so pleased about is Jack is in that category with with Tav for me. Yeah. Of the guys who've been there at the lowest point, mm-hmm. and when they get their hands on silverware. It's going to mean the world to them, um, and that's why he's he's in that category for me, and that's why I'm delighted he's back for the run in. Stevie, uh, I'll, I'll just chuck this quickly to both of you, and we'll move on because the manager answered it already yesterday. He was asked if you got a penalty against Hibs, will James Tavernier be taking it? One word answer, he said yes. Um, two misses, and in my immediate huff, and I will hold my hands up to it. Yes, I tweeted eyes after him now, but. 
players miss penalties on occasion, if he's still confident, still happy. The other thing I remember last year is we then went, OK, take them off penalties, and we went through penalty bingo for weeks where everybody <laughs> had a miss. Oh, right. it was awful. So it's, it's not exactly that like there's candidates coming up that are, you're thinking, oh, well, we've got half a dozen great candidates to hit them. If he wants to take them, the manager's clearly comfortable he's, he's taking them. Um, I'll be honest and say I don't like the two-step run-up ever, and I know that that's fit by da, uh mentality, but it's it's true. I grew up with George Alberts. If George Alberts could take a big runny up, George Alberts didn't run if he didn't have to. Um, <laughs> so if George Alberts could do a big runny, anybody can. But, you know, the week before, against, or the two weeks before against Aberdeen, he got too much on it and knocked it wide of the post. Yesterday, I think he overcompensated and yeah, he's too close to, to the keeper. Yeah. Aye. So it's just a case of, you know, if he's still confident, then the manager's quite clearly happy with him hitting him. What's your thoughts? I'll let you go first, Stevie. Uh, sorry, I, I, I was just let him leave it. You know, I think it becomes problematic if he misses another one, David. Mm. Um, I think yesterday as well, it was a shame in terms of... My fantasy team, I know. Steve, you're absolutely <laughs> spot on, mate. You're yeah, spot on. Yeah, some good about that. But um, <laughs> in terms of that, I, I would have wanted Ryan Kent... See, when Alfredo nicked the ball, I think Ryan Kent was more naturally um, set to just go on and, and go through on that. And because it was Alfredo, and he's maybe wanting the numbers, I, I think they kind of... Ended, it, it led to that penalty... And, if the penalty had come after Hollander's goal, I think Tav goes up there and thrashes that in the corner. That's a good point, yeah. yeah. But I think at 1-0, maybe the week before playing on his mind, he did go safe, and it was a poor penalty because it's very yeah. central. He telegraphed it quite a bit to the goalkeeper, you know, who still produced a, a good save. Yeah. And what a, he needs to just reset and clear it out of his mind so that if and when we do get the next one, because we're in the box so much, it will come probably quite quickly within the next two or three games. He needs to just be confident enough to be taking them how he's taken them before because he was always in the corners and things. Mm -hmm. And obviously because he's went for the the, the side net and corner up, up at Pataudry, it's it's rocked him a wee bit. I don't have any problems with him taking the next one because I'd, you, the next person you would look at is your number nine who at the moment is Alfredo, who's not the, the cleanest of strikers. Yeah. Uh, for the ball. If, the, if Defoe was on the pitch, I wouldn't oh, be like fair <laughs> to, to Jermaine taking them because he's a natural penalty taker. But because he's not, then I think that I would just stay with, with Tav. If he misses another one, David, then I think we need to remove him off them. Uh, mm. For me, I'm kind of backing up with Stevie says that it's one of the ends, right? Even the way he's hit it, see if the goalkeeper dives the other way. Everyone's talking about how cool and composed Tav just tapped that the other side. It's it's a very fine line when you're taking penalties, but I just think like what you said, David, uh, overcompensated, like he hit it with everything he had in the previous game, moved it out wide. So this time he's just tried to be too safe, too hangy just to get back scoring. But the way he was so pissed off at himself and you could see him kind of talking to himself and that, I think the next one that he gets to take, and hopefully it is very, very soon, is get absolutely rifled. And whether it's well, it goes wide or no, it's getting absolutely smashed because you've not hit one as soft like that again. I don't know with how angry he was at yourself that he'd done that. No, nah, it's, it's it's overthinking again, isn't it? It's, yes. Uh, you know the the Didn't last bit. <laughs> but just just belt it, and if he keeper stands there, fair enough. But oh. uh, uh, I'm sure he's 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 working on it. And his penalty record had been splendid up to that point. Uh, I agree with Stevie. I think it would be ideal if we were maybe three 0 up when we get the next one, and yeah. he can just go up, leather at home, and then boom, that's that's that um, <laughs> taken away. Well, to be fair, I think if we're freeing a lap and it's like the last minute, I really want Alan McGregor to take one. <laughs> just to, just no, to really crown the those season Those of us off. a bit older than you remember Chris Woods going up to hit a penalty and missing. So, uh, uh, yeah, my dad's aye. told me that before. Yeah, I mean, so, I made that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not keen on that uh, <laughs> because of that. I'm scarred by that one. Uh, right then, lads, that will almost do us for this week, but I uh, always like to issue a warning because the, 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 the <laughs> shall we say, the the more Puritan among us don't like hearing about uh, our opponents, but we, you know, clearly uh, the, the the reason that we are so far ahead is due to two factors. One is our magnificent form and two is their utter collapse. Stevie, I don't think any of us could have dreamed of being in this position in January. Certainly could have dreamed of being in the lead uh, and did and, and fancied us to be so, but you know, the, you didn't expect to be 23 points, albeit with three games in hand, but it has been an implosion on a scale that I genuinely think you've maybe got to go back to 2000, 2001 under Dick Advocat at Rangers for 
a, a comparison where a team who looked in the summer to be flying very high, this is this is kind of the problems that you get with management where it's it's not that popular. Um, and the same thing happened with Dick Advocate that you can be flying high when you're winning, but as soon as you're not winning, then it's almost like an iceberg. You can't see under the water, but there's an awful lot going on. And that is what's going on there, compounded by bad decisions after after bad decisions. As I was leaving Ibrox after the old firm game, um, I was I was walking with Mark from FF and I saw these bags, like big big hold and I was like, ah, how much gear do they bring to a game? You know? <laughs> and he went, nah, yeah, they're going to Dubai. I'm like, sorry, what? They're going to Dubai? He went, ah, I said, lockdown's coming. He went, I know. I said, That's weird. And then, you know, I thought, oh, well, sure they know better. Turned out they didn't know better. Let's be honest. It's been absolutely delightful. It's been yes. long overdue. Um, and we all have sat and said that if we pressure this mob, then they will crumble. And it's not come. And sometimes you think, you know, you're, you're talking nonsense and all the things that you thought were just a load of rubbish and stuff, but the sustained pressure that that we've brought to the table um, has has basically helped tip them over the edge. And every decision they've made, and we go back to the summer, um, the signings they made, and even at the time I wasn't convinced by the likes of Ayeti and um, you know the goalkeeper and stuff, but these boys are just so far down in, in terms of, of what they had, they they had a position, David. I would say probably three years ago, where they could have went and strengthened and buried us. And I don't say that. It, it's not easy to say because you know it's a it's a terrifying thought. But they didn't. We have gradually worked our way back, um, and we've been you know all credit to Rangers because we can sit here now and say that all credit to the club because the plan that they put in place and it has been a plan investments and, and the money that they've you know they've they front loaded their their investment to do that and everything that they have and, and for want of a better word gambled on happening has happened we have recruited well it's been the polar opposite of what's went on over there they have thrown away even you look at the likes of like Kieran Tierney money and stuff which which would should have kept the, the club um, or would keep Rangers going for, for several years and being able to invest and, and do it properly. They have wasted on the biggest pile of nonsense ever. And when you look at this season alone, every decision they've made has backfired on them spectacularly. And the best thing about it is everybody can see it coming. When you look at you know, going to Dubai, it, it was just such a calamitous decision. Selfish and then, decision as well, yeah. To, to have the audacity to come back and, and sit in front of the press and, and blame everybody else, you know, and, and say that it's all unfair and there's bullying going on and stuff like that. Right after, the greatest thing about that was that came right after Motherwell in terms of, you know, there might have been a wee bit of pressure on Rangers, there might have been press saying, you know, they didn't perform that well, you know, and it was all taken away thanks to their own doing and all the focus went back on them they then went to Livingston and, and blew it again during the week. And, you know, some of the stuff that's, that's come out of there has just been delightful. This is, you know, th this was a team that spent, you know, 15 million on, on guys like um, Ayeti, Barkas and Shane Duffy. And we were told that we were going to get blown away. And Don't these worry. guys are absolutely hopeless. It's been brilliant to watch. I mean, Barkas, the, the start that I sent you boys the other day, he hasn't saved a shot in 2021. You know, this is like when um, I used to play follow follow football with Cammy and the boys, and um, Cammy would be writing up the match reports afterwards and be like, "Oh, Stevie did save one today. <laughs> Even I'm better than this guy." And I'm <laughs> better than this guy. But I mean, so... He dives up the way. Yeah, I've never seen shots anybody. going across him. And what I liked about the start is after the Livingston game, um, he conceded two goals from two shots on target. And somebody said, well, that means he's he's literally conceded 100%. I said, no, he's actually conceded 150% because we scored without a shot on target. <laughs> so he's, he's managed somehow to face two shots and, and concede three goals, which I mean, is that's... quite impressive in its own way. What a, what a sign See, uh, when you look, at, you look at the amount of money that they have invested in this guy, 
you know, five and a half million, whatever it is, he's, he's getting 30 odd grand a week. He's not going to, you know, walk away from that. Then you look at, you know, Shane Duffy, two million, 40 grand a week. You look at this guy, a Yeti, who's never fit. He, he, he doesn't look anywhere near the, the calibre of, of player in terms of they have had good strikers, let's be honest, in, in yeah. Dembele and um, Eduard, who couldn't get away from that place quick enough. Yeah, you know. and, and you look at that squad, David, and they, they've got three or four guys on loan. They have got six or seven of their main players who've now only got 18 months left in their contract. A manager who's going to inevitably be replaced. A CEO and a board that the fans are now completely against. We have a massive opportunity, and I'm thinking in terms of not only this season, but the next few years to really put our foot on their necks if we do it properly in terms of continuing the, the way we are going, which, as I said, all credit to the club, all credit to the, especially the board to have the bravery to execute the plan the way we have. We have a chance to not only uh, win this league, but surpass them and go away and flip the whole thing on its head in terms of money, um, value of squads, the whole works. This grounding that we have put in this plan, you know, three, four years in the making, the evolution as we go back, that, that famous word that, that, that CJ has, has done, that everybody seems to be talking about now. But it's, <laughs> it's so true that um, the way we sit, and, you know, it's always dangerous to sit, and I'm not trying to be cocky or complacent, but I'm just saying that we sit in a place that we have worked for and built and, and put in place over several years, and it's now the grounding that we have to be able to be in a strong position for the next few years, whereas over the other side of the city, over at that tip, they've got all that to have to do, and we've got the ability to not not stretch away from them, but certainly, you know, dominate for the foreseeable future. And that's the way I'm looking at it, David, and that's the way I hope that everybody at Ibrox is looking at it as well. And we know that inevitably we've got our own kind of difficulties. We've got a few players out of contract, and there'll be a wee bit of shuffling in the squad. But then you look at the boys that we are you know, apparently looking at, according to the papers and things like that, we're planning, you know, we're, future, we're looking yes. at windows two, three ahead. Um, and that's where Ross Wilson and the planning of the club comes in. So, yeah, I mean, I'm delighted where we're sitting at the moment. I'm delighted that we're there sitting at the moment. And I just hope that we really kick on and put even more pressure on them. For me, um, when I look at it, is I just I just look at it all from the kind of the Rangers positive perspective. I think we started the season off, we stopped getting in our way, we stopped beating ourselves, and the way we've been playing under Steven Gerrard has drastically affected them badly because they were always able, whenever they had a slip up or a mistake, to rely on us making mistakes. But we've cut that out now. We've matured. We've grown. We've evolved. There you are, uh, <laughs> and. I, that's just that's the way I look at it. I just look at this Rangers team and I'm just like so damn proud of you. And I love the fact that now on my channel, I didn't see them anymore. I used to see them all the time, laughing and doing their wee Ivory Coast flags and all that. But they're gone now. That's brilliant. Thank you, Barkas and Duffy. Thank you. <laughs> yep, no, I think that's a, a very, very fair point. And that will do us this month on the Rangers Review. We will, of course, be back next month. I think it's Stevie's turn in the chair, which means that CJ is going to get March, which might Woo! be a good month to get for certain reasons. Right. Thank you so much to Stevie. Get your plugs in a wee bit more enthusiastically oh, no. than month one, please. Oh, God, here we go. Um, yeah, just ask everybody to go and check out the blog, um, Four Lads Had a Dream on Twitter, uh, but also on Facebook and Instagram. Basically, heard myself out everywhere. Like so it. You, can, you can see it. Um, and also, we thanks as well. There was a, a, a bit of a dip in, um, in terms of Four Lads Had a Dream. It made me kind of think about but the last um, kind of month or so. People have really got behind it as well. So, I really appreciate that. Go check it out. Also, got uh, obviously a new podcast with Alex and Mark. Um, and there's lots of kind of free episodes on there which you can go and check out. There's big things coming from that channel um, in terms of, of, of kind of Rangers output. Um, there's also stuff on on Mark's career about AC Milan and that, which is is very interesting, and stuff about Alex's career as well as having a, a lot of guests. Now I know that um, obviously this is on the heart and hand platform, and and I wouldn't be saying to guys to 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 stop this because I'm a heart and hand patron, always have been, always will be. But it's something a wee bit extra. If you can afford a, another couple of pounds a month, 
Um, I think it's well worth checking out. So I'd ask you to go and have a wee look at that. And again, David, thanks for um, having us on. Um, CJ, thanks for having us on your platforms. It's, it's much appreciated. My pleasure. The more the, the more the better, in my opinion. CJ, where can people find your gear? Uh, if you fancy um, watching some YouTube videos and having a wee bit of laugh, it's CJ Novo 992. Pretty much just the Jack Appreciation Show. Pretty much. Honest. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. But uh, but you know he, he does it he does it with a LAN folks. So uh, <laughs> I, I would I, go and watch that. You are a hero to younger people. I've noticed that. Um, my nephews were were asking me the the thirteen and eight, and they said to me, um, "What's your podcast like, Uncle David?" I said, "Well, I, I talk about Rangers," and they went, "Oh, like CJ Novo." <laughs> Bastard. Um, so, <laughs> so, I can yeah, actually see you saying that. That's I, the best I was like, I just like that. Bastard. Um, <laughs> so, David, sorry, I've, I've told CJ this before. My old fella up the road, he's he's 74. And um, I, I said to him, Did you get the link? You know, did you listen to that podcast and that? No, 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 son. I listened to the young fella, <laughs> CJ Novo, as well. He watches him as well. He's 74. That, I just kind of compete with that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's good. Uh, it's a good time to be a Rangers supporter. I think it's fair to say. Right, folks, we'll be back next month. Until then, let's hope the team keeps winning and let's hope we're getting closer to 55. Thanks for listening. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for part one of today's uploads. Hopefully you did enjoy the video enough to be letting us know down in the comment section below because that just tells us you want to see more podcasts in the future. But before we wrap up the first upload, as always, a special shout-out to Stevie from Four Lads Had a Dream and David from Heart and Hand. The links will be down there in the description below. And a special thank you to you if you sat here and talked to us about Ranger Things for about an hour, but I take care of yourselves everyone, I'll see you in six years to talk about the Hibs game, all the best and bye bye.